yes, go. It is、yeah. the finals. Season seven finals. Bring him to the show. Adam Booth. I can hear Hello. myself. Nat, Hello. I, I got to say, this, this is basically one year since you and I started talking esports with SBR because we talked、really? about this, this exact tournament about a year ago.、Uh, Today, I think a year ago, I think a couple weeks off, but、uh, this season six was、uh, one of the first CSGO tournaments you and I did a show about. Oh, so it's like happy anniversary. Yeah, yeah, happy <laughs> anniversary. I'm sorry I didn't get you anything. Oh, that's all right. Well, listen, if you bring some winning tips, that's all I'm after. So let's see what you got. So it is, it is, the, it is the finals. With a prize pool of half a million dollars. Very、yeah. nice indeed. But the question is is anybody, to quote your, part of your article, can anyone be good enough to knock out the Danes in a series? Can they? Well, I think they can. We've seen it happen a couple times、uh, this year, but I don't really think. Well, I'm, I'm banking on nobody doing it in the playoffs, at least at、uh, ECS. At the finals this weekend,、uh, Astralis have a great track. So the, the, the tournament's taking place in London. It's,、uh, the format is always、uh, just a short three day little stint.、Uh, I, think, I think it's, no, it's Thursday this year. I think it's during Thursday. So this, this year it's actually going Thursday to the 9th.、Um, yeah, so this, this year it's four days. But、um, still, it's a, it's a short little one, and Astralis have won the last two. And they have been the sort of focal point of、um, some ridicule in the community, some,、um, I'm not going to say harassment, but、uh, they, the community s sort of、uh, been criticizing them for their performance since winning the last major、uh, earlier this year in February. So I feel like this is one of those, I, I don't usually bet with、um, trying to guess player motivations, especially in team games where. We really don't know coming in what the psyche is of、uh, five or ten players.、Um, but I do think Astralis has a little bit of、um, an opportunity for redemption to sort of say, no, 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 we're still here. We've, we've had a, a sort of a string of、uh, mediocre performances, but、uh, this is a title、uh, that we're going to bring home and sort of show you guys. Shut up the critics, basically, is what I, what but- I would be. Doing in their position. Well, that, that, but that's the thing. And there are, but there are two types of people, you see. There's people that when you, when you do this, right, they, they fight against it and they're like, I'll prove you wrong. That's the kind of person that I am. The other type of person, though, is the person that when you do something negative or you do something that they actually then will retreat into their it, it, retreat.、Mm. So you think these guys, guys are going to like, they're, they're going to they're gonna shut the critics up. They're going to just be like, that's how you think that they're going to come and approach this. Yeah, yeah, because Astralis, I mean, just like traditional sports, the best competitors want to win regardless of the stakes. They, they, they you know, you could be playing,、um, you know, card games and they'll still want to win. You know, it, it's, it's sort of something intrinsically built into champions that,、um, you know, we want to be the best. We don't want、uh, people overshadowing us. The, you know, Counter Strike right now is so competitive that Astralis aren't really in a position to take any of anything for granted. And、um, it's very easy for them, to, or any, any top、um, uh, esports gamer,、uh, to sort of coast and get behind on the meta.、Um, but I do believe Astralis, given they've, they've had quite a bit of time off, they've only been playing Blast Pro Series tournaments, which are、mm. kind of, we've talked about them a couple times on the show. And, I, and I, I've said to you on, when we've done the show, you know, if Astralis wants to win this weekend, they will win. And two out of three of those tournaments, we did not see the same caliber of play from them that we saw at the major back in February. Now, with such a short tournament, it's in London. They're flying from Denmark straight there. It, I, I think it's just、uh, let's take care of business. And, and because, okay, so what happened this weekend? I, I wrote about it in the article. I spent more time talking about sort of the drama in the scene than、uh, a bunch of, a <laughs> like, bunch this, of the best. This is my but, summary、uh, drama, 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 <laughs> tips. <It's> like, <laughs> but it does, it does set up context for the, what's coming up this summer. And that's why I thought it was important to, to discuss.、Uh, 
Um, so Liquid, which is a team that has been at the um, has been victimized by Astralis for much of the past year in Grand Finals. Um, they took the world number one spot based on uh, sort of a, a, a website that ranks them. And it's sort of agreed that they're now the number one team based on those rankings. But if you sort of, as a better, were to say, okay, let me see the odds. If Astralis is 1.8 or better, it's a no-brainer. You have to take them because they've absolutely owned Liquid for the past 12 months. Well, actually, going back further than that, but we'll talk about the past 12 months. So I really think this is a great... So I, I look today... So I took Astralis to win on the outright market at Unibet 1.55 yesterday. Um, it's actually 1.61 currently at Pinnacle. I love that. I mean, if it, if it continues to go up, if we see a 1.66, 1.7, if people are really thinking... You know, the Astralis era is over. I am happy to hit Astralis for a couple more units because we have no reason to think it's over other than uh, conjecture and people thinking Astralis is bad without actually seeing they're bad. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, I don't know. Like but it, I don't it, know. Just, From it, what you've been saying to me, I'm it, a bit like, oh, I don't know if I would bet on the... Uh, you're saying that they've, they've got all this like <laughs> online abuse, they're coming in, they're like, you know, and then it's kind of like, if they want to win, they'll win. Oh, God, I don't want to put my money on somebody who, like, you know, d decides if they want to show up or not. You know what I mean? Like, just but like, this, is, this is different than those past tournaments because it's it's a, a, a it's a con concrete land with eight teams that all they like Astralis had to qualify to play here they weren't just given an, an invitation direct invitation like they did at blast pro series now i think a good comparable analogy um was a few weeks ago um nadal lost i think to Tsitsipas um on a, at a clay tournament wasn't that correct and then I think Whale Capper was discussing how he's going to come back in the next one. I think it was Rome and smoke him. And that's what happened. Yeah. The Dow okay, played yeah. like he had a chip and something to prove. Yeah. This is the mentality I think Astralis that's ought right, okay. to have. And that's why I think there's a bit of value on them, even though their odds are a bit short. Um, so. I'm on them for the outright, um, and they act, they also have a very, I'm not going to say easy first matchup, but they have a matchup versus a team that will know right away whether the Astralis era is over, because if Astralis loses to this team, then I'll probably start waving the white flag, and I'll, I'll look to fade them the rest of the weekend, because they really shouldn't lose their opening match. Uh, even though their opponent has some um, sort of upset potential against some of the other opposition. All right. All right. So, okay. So, you you, are, you run me back a little bit. Even though the price for Astralis <laughs> is low, Craig Edwards wouldn't touch that with a barge pole. I know with his prices. So, okay. So, <laughs> what other than uh, uh, as far as like special bets, prop bets, anything else that you're looking at? So, you like Astralis even though it's low. Is there anything else you like? Um... So there, I, I will be looking at uh, some map props. I, I do play these a little bit. I, I usually keep them to myself because they have big odds, but they're very dependent on the meta. But I, I think I might post some of those. As far as match bets, um, I already took Astralis. Oops, sorry, it's right here. I already took Astralis minus five and a half against Furia at 1.8 at bet365. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I really like that. I mean, Fury can cover that spread on a good map for them. But I, again, I want to see Astralis struggle against a team like Fury before I'm willing to say, no, there's value on Fury at 1.9 or 1.8 to get double digits against the best team, who I still think is the best team in the world. Um, another one that I've looked at that I haven't placed yet is Nip uh, as an, a slight underdog against NRG. Um, I think NRG is just a North American team that really is hot and cold. I, I have a problem seeing them as a favorite against just about anybody. Um, the next match was Complexity versus Vitality. And I mentioned in the article that there was rumors. Well, yesterday when I wrote it, I had heard that there was rumors that they would do some roster moves. 
Sure enough, as soon as the article was published, the roster move occurred. <laughs> um, so the timing was a little off, but um, I, I'm glad I waited on that one just to see. Um, I mean, the line's kind of moved too far now to take a, a bet, but um, Complexity has a, a new uh, young player on their team. Don't know a ton about him, um, but... I would say they're going to really struggle against the French squad of Vitality. So I took Vitality uh, to win Group B, um, which is uh, a future. Um, and so I, I think that's as close to a free win as the French should have, given that the new player just came in and the player that went out was their in-game leader, like kind of like their captain or who organize the strategies. So that's going to really cripple complexity's chances here at mm -hmm. London. Um, and then the final match um, was MIBR versus North. This one I'm going to have to look into a bit more before I, I place anything. Uh, North looked decently good last week at uh, the uh, DreamHack Dallas tournament. Um, and MIBR have had some time off. They've only been playing ESL Pro League, ECS, and, you know, they beat Liquid, who is the number one team in the world right now. So, sorry, I gotta <laughs> stop mocking. One. I gotta, I gotta I don't stop think mocking so. them. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> they are justified. They've been playing in a lot of tournaments, so they've earned the points they've got. I just have a hard time believing that Liquid deserves one. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be mocked for that myself. But um so MIBR North, I'm gonna have to look at potential maps. I might even just be safe and wait for the map to come out for that one. Uh North have a great amount of firepower, so do MIBR. For me, this one is gonna be who has the worst T side. So because they both have really strong C T sides. So that one I'm gonna wait on. But mm -hmm. I can't believe it. We have we are actually not in a rush for time at the moment, right? <laughs> We are not in a rush for time. I, I, yesterday, I went over 20 minutes. Can you believe? I didn't know that I was going to go over because I just, I put in Women's World Cup in the schedule right at the end until I got clearance. Uh, and I said, look, this show is going to go over because I have too much on. But we had EJ Jar, uh, the Rainmaker, coming on to cover tennis and Whale Kappa also covers women. So I was like, we've got to kind of do it all together and you know, so people don't have to come on too many times during the week. And I said, it, it will go over, but I said, I'll, I'll keep it in, at an hour, 10 minutes. And it was like an extra 10 minutes. And I came out of the studio, was like looking at me. Well, and I'm like, I'm, like, I'm just really so used sorry. to having to be at the end of the show and sort of powering <laughs> through everything yeah. right away that I probably talked oh. quicker than I needed to. So yeah, any questions that you might have for me now? I did. Well, I do have some questions. That's that's why I'm right. here. Is to ask no, no. Well, the first question is actually just more of a curious thing. If it's in London, then are you go? Surely you you you're going to go down. Is it fun to go and watch watch these uh, tournaments? So I've gone to the last two ECS um, two years ago. I bought tickets. At, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say I bought them for my girlfriend and I, but I really <laughs> just was curious and I wanted to go and. She came along with me and was a good sport about it, and we had fun, grabbed some beer. But uh, last year, I, I won tickets, and I went down again. Um, and this year, I'm not going to go. My brother and my dad were just in London, uh, so I was just there mm -hmm. over this past weekend. And uh, so I actually, I, I've had enough of London for, you know, a couple months now. I, I really? can go down. Really? Wow, it takes you that, yeah, that will do it. Well, you know, funny you say that, because um, it's Father's Day here on June the 16th. And we have got one of the the Gold Cup uh, football matches playing here at our stadium. And so oh. I obviously really wanted to go. Hans is really not that into football. But I was like, oh, happy Father's Day, babe. I got you some tickets to go. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. So we're going to yeah, go and, and do that for I get to come with day. you with a bonus. Yeah. With little, we're going to bring Lily and then we're going to watch the, the game because it's for Father's Day. Oh, nice. And he was just like, nice. he's so sweet. Well, see, that's, he's like, that's oh, nice thank you. Out, but he knows that he must be thinking, why did she get me those tickets? Because she, I don't really <laughs> like football. But he's just really polite. And so, you know, there we go. Nice. All right. So, all right. There we go. Okay. So, just, oh, go ahead. Okay. I'm just going to double check here. So, um, oh, the, so the other thing, obviously, you've, you've talked about some of the, um, you know, like Liquid, Astralis, um, um, NRG, um, you know, tip. Are there any other, like, what, are there any other players that we should be looking out for? 
Um, so that's always an interesting thing because I find a lot of the CS community focuses on the star potential of individual players. And don't get me wrong, players can break a game wide open or with a big clutch wreck the economy or win a match and have, you know, a great, you know, their aim can be on point enough that it can carry their team through a game. Mm -hmm. But we find in a game like Counter-Strike, and I think this is really important from a betting perspective, not just a fan perspective, that it's the team cohesion, you know, flashes, their, their separation as they enter a bomb site, their ability to trade for one another. Because the the aim and skill at this level, like that we'll see this weekend, is not that great between the best and the worst. Astralis aren't the best because they have all the best players on their team. I've said this nonstop for the past year. What makes them the best is their strategy. Their, uh, you know, when we see them on CT side, they'll work in two and th- three man groups to take part of map, uh, like take map control. They'll trade off each other effectively. They'll use their nades better than any other team. That's what makes them the best. And and when we see them losing, it's because they're not doing, they're not being assertive and proactive on the map to do those things. So there are always players to like, okay, for example, MIBR has two former top five players in the world or top three players in the world, Cold Zera and Fallen. Mm -hmm. Those guys have had excellent stats sort of improving since the major. Those two are game breakers. When they're on form and they're both on form, they can almost just do run any stretch they want and carry their team to victory. So MIBR is, I would say, a dark horse at this tournament in the sense that if there's one team that I would actually be concerned can beat Astralis or has Astralis' number in the past, it's that team. Um, Astralis, again, they have the clutch master Zipix. Um, they have a great opera device, uh, but again, device, his mechanics isn't better than Fallen's or Cold Zero's. It's just that the team works so well, so well in unison with him. Um, Furia has some huge, uh, uh, upset potential, as I mentioned, and we saw at DreamHack Dallas, they have um, enormous firepower. I mean, on their CT sides, they were like a wall when Vitality, uh, played them and who el- I forget who else. They, Fnatic, they just stomp Fnatic and Vitality, which are two top 10, top 15 teams. So I would be careful about the firepower on Vit- uh, Furia and MIBR especially. Uh, but honestly, of the eight teams here, Complexity is the only team that I would write off almost completely. And that's just because they've lost their IGL at a crucial time, you know, two days before a tournament. It's just a very difficult to have a solid map pool playing best of threes mm-hmm. um, against seven other teams that have been putting in work for months together. So, yeah. And I was just going to mention one other thing, um, the format. So after they all play initial best of ones, uh, the opening round, and then they go into best of threes for the remainder. Uh, and then the grand final, best of five... No, best of three as well. So it's best of ones for the first four matches and then uh, best of three series all the way throughout. Awesome stuff. And, and we're finishing Bill one says, minute in perfect timing. We did. Um, Bill <laughs> says a motivated Astralis is worth the juice. Yes, that's my point. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. This is not Blast Pro Series tournaments which are the tournaments that Astralis has sort of got a partnership with, or they've signed a contract to do a bunch of their tournaments this year. This is a, ECS is a legitimate LAN with a bunch more of the world watching. It's in London. They've won these the past two, uh, two years. So they care about it. I think 1.55, 1.6, whatever, put a couple units down. If it doesn't come in, it doesn't come in, but I just can't see Astralis not being in the semifinals, finals on the final day. All right. One very quick question. Musty just says, who's the fave for AFCON? Who's the fave for what? AFCON. Let me pull this up. I've got Afcon. to see this. AFCON. Or is that not? Is that maybe? That's AFCON. That must, I think that's a football thing or something. Yeah, that's, that's the uh, Africa. 
Oh, African Cup of Nations. Cup of Nations. Oh my goodness, we've not even gotten there yet. No, this week's all uh, Nations League. We'll, we'll get to there. We are actually I mean, looking... I, I can give them a pick. We, I mean, we, I'll, I'll we, try, we, you know. We will be covering take, take Africa Nigeria. Cup of Nations. <laughs> we do very well in the past, actually. We cover Africa Cup of Nations. We're doing very well. Um, so there we go. Africa Cup of Nations. <laughs> all, all right. right. <laughs> Adam Booth, Lock E Querty. There we go, is his uh, right. Twitter handle. Alex has chimed in, Africa Cup Nations. Thanks, bud. You should have been there a little bit earlier. African Nations. We do very well. Ask Alex. He's on the chat. We do very well in Africa Cup of Nations. Uh, Lucky Querty is, um, is Adam's Twitter handle. Thank you very much, Adam. Astralis all the way. Let's see if they can do this. Woohoo! And uh, yep. yeah, take care. And I'll see you soon. See you later, Nat. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.